بأمير المؤمنين صلوا على محمد وآل محمد اللهم صل على أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين حبيب إله العالمين أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد وعلى أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين لا سيما بقية الله في الأرضين إمامنا وسيدنا الحجة بن الحسن المهدي أرواحنا له الفدا Respected brothers and sisters السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته I sincerely congratulate you on the birth of the commander of the faithful, the container of the knowledge of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. the lion of Allah, Al-Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib sallallahu alayhi. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless our gathering this evening as we have come to show our support and love for the commander of the faithful, Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salam. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us his ziyara, his shafa'a, and to illuminate our minds and hearts with his wisdom and with his knowledge. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala states in the Holy Quran, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا أَشَدُّ حُبًّا لِلَّهِ And those who believe, they are deeper and stronger in their love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you stand to speak about Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salam, you're intimidated because you stand before an endless ocean. How can you share any knowledge when you stand before an ocean of knowledge? When you think of the knowledge of Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salam, your own knowledge evaporates. It's not even a drop in an ocean. And how do we have the audacity and the courage to speak about the Lion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the most courageous? No one can do justice to Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salam. However, in these few moments, we would like to shed some light on a beautiful dimension from the life of Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salam. And that is the love of Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created us with various emotions. These emotions give us life. Imagine life without emotions. We would not be humans, we would be robots. Imagine your life without the emotion of love, the emotion of fear, the emotion of anger, the emotion of hope, these emotions make life beautiful. They give you that taste of life. But probably the most profound, beautiful emotion that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us is the emotion of love. It is this dimension of our life that truly gives us hope. Love gives you an infinite amount of fuel to work, to be active. Have you seen people who are in love? Whether they love someone from the opposite gender, whether they love their project, whether they love their work, you see them never getting tired. Physically, they may get tired. However, spiritually, psychologically, emotionally, they're connected to this endless fuel. It's that power of love that truly drives us. Now what's magnificent about Ali ibn Abi Talib salam is that he shows us how to take advantage of this emotion and achieve the unachievable and do the impossible. When you think of the legacy of Amir al-Mu'mineen and the strength of Amir al-Mu'mineen and the power of Amir al-Mu'mineen, what do you think really drove him? It was that love that he had. He channeled it properly and he achieved that which is impossible for others. Let's examine the love of Ali ibn Abi Talib salam in multiple dimensions. The first dimension 
is the love of Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib salam for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you see the life of Amir al-Mu'mineen, you see that he was always captivated by the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It was that fuel that always gave him energy. Wherever he went, whatever he did, he had Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on his mind. One day, as a report from Imam al-Sadiq states, when Imam Ali salam was on the member on the pulpit in Masjid al-Kufa, a man by the name of Dhalab came to him. Imam al-Sadiq says Dhalab was very courageous and very eloquent. And he had a very sharp tongue. He came to Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salam and he asks him an interesting question. He tells him, oh Amir al-Mu'mineen, tell me, هل رأيت ربك? Have you seen your Lord? Now Dhalab was not an ignorant person. But there is a reason why he asked this question from Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salam. The Imam alayhi salam told him, وَيْلَكَ يَا ذِعْلَبْ مَا كُنْتُ أَعْبُدُ رَبًّا لَمْ أَرَهُ How do you expect me to worship a Lord that I have not seen? In other words, of course I've seen my Lord. Dhalab asks him, كَيْفَ رَأَيْتَ Show us, how did you see your Lord Allah? The Imam alayhi salam tells him, وَيْلَكَ يَا ذِعْلَبْ لَمْ تَرَهُ الْعُيُونَ بِمُشَاهَدَةِ الْأَبْصَارِ وَلَكِنْ رَأَتْهُ الْقُلُوبُ بِحَقَائِقِ الْإِيمَانِ O oh, Dhalab, the eyes do not see him physically through sight, but it is the hearts that see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through the reality of iman and faith. Look at this response by Amir al-Mu'mineen. Sallu ala Muhammadin wa ali Muhammad. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad. You see that the Imam السلام, sees Allah in every step of his life. Anyone who would ask him a question about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you can see the love in the heart of Amir al-Mu'mineen flowing, waiting to speak about Allah and the attributes of Allah. And then the Imam السلام, gives a beautiful sermon to Dhalib. He tells him when we see the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we don't see anything like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when we see that Allah is the one who gave us emotions, we know He is above all emotions. When we see that we have limitations, we know that the one who created us does not have any limitations. Amir al-Mu'mineen truly with his powerful eloquence described to the world who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. Sometimes with two words. At the time of the Imam salam, there were two deviant groups one of them, they would think of Allah in physical terms. They would ascribe anthropomorphic qualities to Allah. Allah having a leg, having hands. Some people think of God in physical terms. This was one deviant group. The other deviant group were those who accused God of forcing us to commit our actions. They argued that Allah has planned everything and He's determined everything. You think you're the actor, but Allah is the one who's creating your actions. So the Imam السلام, was asked about these two ideas. Believe me, no one other than Amir al-Mu'mineen can give you such a beautiful response in two beautiful words. The Imam السلام, beautifully, so eloquently stated, At-Tawheedu Allah tatawahamah wal-adlu Allah tattahimah. Even look at the rhyming in his words. The Imam says, true Tawheed means that you don't subject Allah to the limits of your imagination. Anything that comes to your imagination, Allah is above that. What about justice? We believe in the justice of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Don't put blame on Allah. You commit a sin. You commit evil acts and then you blame Allah for that. You say Allah is the one who has written everything. And so basically I'm stuck with this evil act. He's the one who caused it. The Imam says, no, that's not the concept of justice. The concept of justice defies this belief. So you truly see Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salam immersed 
in the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wherever he would go, whatever he would, he would do, he was captivated by the love of his Lord. Whether he was in the battlefield, he would never forget Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Always reminding himself that he's fighting for the sake of Allah. You're all familiar with the incident that happened with the Imam salam and Amr ibn Abdi Wood at the battle of Ahzab or Khandaq when the Imam achieved victory over him and the Imam was about to finish him off. One narration states he spat in the face of Imam Ali. The companions don't know what's going on. They see the Imam about to killing him, about to kill him when the Imam retreats. He leaves him, he takes a circle, and then he comes back to finish him off. They asked him, Ya Amir al muminin Ya Ali ibn Abi Talib, why did you do that? The Imam alayhi salam stated, and look at the beautiful lesson. When he spat on my face, I became angered. Because even a believer, you have dignity. If you don't get angry, that means you have no dignity. I felt insulted, I felt angered. But I wanted to kill him purely and purely for the sake of my Lord. So I stood up, so my anger subsides. Then I finished him off for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ali Muhammad. Who other than Amir al muminin alayhi salam has this type of philosophy? Has this type of understanding and relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? So you find him that lion in the battlefield, but at night. He never would forget about those moments to reconnect with his Lord and to speak those beautiful words of munajat. The Imam, despite him having a very heavy schedule, especially during those four years in Kufa, war after war problems, he's leading an entire ummah. Imam Ali's government on today's map exceeds 50 countries. Can you imagine the workload on him? But at night he would go to Masjid al-Kufa. And the Imam would open his heart to Allah. Allahumma inni as'aluka al-aman. Yawma la yanfa'u malu wa la banoon. Illa man atallaha bi qalbin salim. Oh Allah, I ask you for safety. Because he recognized that Allah is the source of all safety and security. For which day? On that day where nothing will help. No money, no children. Except al-qalbu salim. The sound heart will help you on the day of judgment. Then towards the end of the munajat, just see how Amir al muminin speaks to Allah. Mawlai ya Mawlai, anta al Mawla wa ana al Abd, wa hal yarham al Abd illa al Mawla. My master, my master, you're the master, and I am the slave. And who other than the master can have mercy on the slave? Mawlai ya Mawlai, you are the rich, and I am the stingy. And I am the poor. And who other than the rich can have mercy on the poor? Oh my master, you're the powerful and I am the weak. And who other than the powerful can have mercy on the weak? مولاي يا مولاي أنت الجواد وأنا البخيل وهل يرحم البخيل إلا الجواد My master, you're the generous and I'm not. By name, because I'm your creation. You have to teach me how to be generous. And who other than the generous can have mercy on the one who's not generous. You see the love of Amir al muminin It just flows from his heart everywhere that he, that he goes. And this is a lesson for us. This powerful emotion that Allah has given you, use it in the way of Allah. Because I'll tell you something. When you fall in love with someone, and the more deep your love is, the more you're making yourself vulnerable to be hurt. The more the chances that you will be hurt. Have you seen people who fall in love? And then after a while, that other person betrays this person, hurts this person. This person gets crushed. This person tells him, I gave you my heart and you have crushed my heart. The only being out there who will never crush your heart is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Give your heart to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And one big obstacle in the way for us to love Allah is the love of this dunya. That's why Amir al muminin alayhi salam in a beautiful hadith, he states, كَيْفَ يَدَّعِي حُبَّ اللَّهِ مَنْ سَكَنَ قَلْبَهُ حُبُّ الدُّنْيَا How can you claim 
to truly love God, when the world basically lives in your heart, when the world has captivated your heart. That's why Amir al-Mu'mineen salam teaches us not to be deceived by the materialism of this life. How do you think Imam Ali achieved what he achieved? He just changed his perspective on this materialistic world. The Imam salam states to me, this materialistic world is like food in the mouth of a grasshopper. Even less. What is the value of, a, of food in the mouth of a grasshopper, honestly? Does it have any value? The Imam says, that's how see, I see this world. That's how I see this world. This is how he was able to truly free his heart for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's why he was so humble. Once the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa referred to Imam Ali alayhi salam at Hudaybiyah, and the Prophet, when he referred to the, to the Imam alayhi salam, he used this title for Imam Ali, Khasaf al Na'al, the one who's fixing his sandal. Amir al Mu'mineen, despite his greatness, he would fix his own sandal. That requires a lot of humbleness. Today, we live like kings, we want others to serve us. Something needs fixing, right? You call someone if you're rich and you have the money, you call someone. Amir al Mu'mineen salam, was on his way to Basra when Ibn Abbas says, I saw him fixing his sandal. I came to him, I told him, Come on, Ali ibn Abi Talib, you're the king, you're the Khalifa, you're the ruler. Do you really need to fix your sandal? You know, this, this government that you have with all the resources. You can just get a better one, buy a new one. Do you really need to fix it? The Imam told me, Ibn Abbas, Wallahi, this worldly power that you see, my sandal is worth more than it. This is Amir al Mu'mineen alayhi salam. And he was only able to achieve that by seeing the beauty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, truly, the first dimension in the life of the Imam alayhi salam is his amazing love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The second dimension. The second dimension that we see in the life of Amir al Mu'mineen alayhi salam is his amazing love for Rasulullah Muhammad ibn Abdullah. Allahumma salli ala Other Muslim schools, schools of thought, they blame us. Why are you Shias obsessed with Amir al Mu'mineen? You know why we're obsessed with Imam Ali? Because Imam Ali السلام, teaches us how to love Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. He teaches us how to obey Rasulullah. He gives us access to the knowledge of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. And Imam Ali السلام, you know, if I were to ask you, what, is, what are the greatest miracles of the Prophet? If you ask the average Muslim, they'll tell you the Quran. Yes. That is his greatest miracle. He transformed the Arabian Peninsula in 20 years. Yes, that's one of his miracles. But I tell you, by far one of the greatest miracles of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi is that he produced for humanity a student like Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam. That's the miracle of Rasulullah. And so Imam Ali alayhi salam teaches us how to love the Prophet. I would like to share with you a hadith. In the book of Tafsir of Al Imam Al Askari السلام, that captures the love of Amir Al Mu'mineen for the Prophet. See how the Imam loves the Prophet and learn from Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib to, rav, to love Rasulullah. In this hadith, it states that Allah sends Jibra'il to the Prophet when he was in Mecca. Jibra'il tells him, Ya Rasulullah, the pagans of Mecca have gathered to kill you. That was the day before the Hijrah. They are going to try to assassinate you. So ask your brother and your cousin Ali ibn Abi Talib to see if he's willing to sleep in your bed, meaning where you sleep. The Prophet didn't have a raised bed, he'd sleep on the floor, but where you would sleep. See if he's willing. The Prophet approaches Amir al Mu'mineen alayhi salam and he tells him, Oh my dear brother, oh my dear cousin Ali. There is an assassination plot. Are you willing to sleep in my bed so Allah saves me? The Imam السلام, quickly, without needing time to think, he said yes. The Prophet warned him this could be dangerous. 
فقال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وآله لعلي عليه السلام أرضيت أن أطلب فلا أوجد وتوجد فلعله أن يبادر إليك الجهال فيقتلونك أو علي if they don't find me and they find you they might try to kill you are you okay with that do you know what you're agreeing to listen to the response of Amir al-Mu'mineen he says بَلَا يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ رَضِيتُ أَنْ يَكُونَ رُوحِي لِرُوحِكَ الْوِقَاءِ Yes, Ya Rasulullah, I've accepted to sacrifice my life for you. وَنَفْسِي لِنَفْسِكَ فِدَاءِ I am giving my soul for you. Then he states, بَلْ رَضِيتُ أَنْ يَكُونَ رُوحِي وَنَفْسِي فِدَاءً لِأَخٍ لَكْ أَوْ قَرِيبٍ أَوْ لِبَعْضِ الْحَيْوَانَاتِ تَمْتَهِنُهَا He says, Ya Rasulullah, not only Am I willing to sacrifice my life for you? But I'll sacrifice my life for a brother if you have a brother. I'm, I'm even willing to sacrifice my life for the animal on which you ride if you tell me to. Then, the, then he tells him, Ya Rasulullah, wa hal uhibbu al-hayata illa li khidmatik. Ya Rasulullah, do you know why I love this dunya, I love this life? It's to serve you. And if it weren't for you, Ya Rasulullah, I wish I would not live one hour in this dunya. That's the love of Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salam. This is how much he loved Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. After the Prophet hears this response from him, he tells him, Ya Ali, I swear by Allah, the angels informed me that you would give me this response. And no one other than you has this close relationship towards me. Amir al-Mu'mineen teaches us how to love our Prophet. And truly he inspires us. Read Nahj al -Baragha. The Imam, no companion after the Prophet has that much respect for the Prophet like Amir al -Mu'mineen. The descriptions he gives you of Rasulullah. The admiration that he has for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. And that is the commander of the faithful and that's why we love him so much. The third dimension in the life of Amir al -Mu'mineen, when it comes to his love, we see the love of Amir al-Mu'mineen for the Holy Qur'an. Amir al-Mu'mineen salam was the other side of the Holy Qur'an. He was the walking, talking, living Qur'an. And I would like to share with you, my dear brothers and sisters, that the Qur'an we have today, it survived because of the efforts of Ali ibn Abi Talib. Let's examine this in stages very briefly. Number one. Who is the one who fully compiled the Qur'an? There's a discussion amongst Muslims as to when the Qur'an was compiled. Some say this happened at the time of Abu Bakr. Some say at the time of Umar. Some say at the time of Uthman. We believe based on our research that the Qur'an was compiled towards the end of the Prophet's life. When the Prophet was still living, you had pages on which the Quran was written. Yes, those pages were not compiled neatly into one book, but it existed at the time of the Prophet ﷺ. And the Prophet asked Imam Ali ﷺ, after I depart this dunya, I entrust you with this task. I want you to compile the Quran in one full organized book. Don't leave your house until you do that. And that's exactly what the Imam did. The Imam السلام, compiled the entire Qur'an. He spent days in his house making sure those pages are arranged properly and correctly. Now when the Imam السلام, finished the task of compiling the Qur'an, he came to the masjid, he showed it to the companions. They opened his book. They did not like what they saw. They saw that the book of Amir al-Mu'mineen in compiling the Qur'an also had the tafsir of the Qur'an. The Imam would write the verses and then on the edges, he had written how the Prophet explained those verses. Some of those companions did not like what they saw. Some hypocrites were exposed. The virtues of Imam Ali السلام, were in so many of those pages. They told him, Ali, you can keep your copy. They rejected to accept the copy of the Imam السلام, and give everyone access to the copy of Amir al-Mu'mineen. But the Imam السلام, did not stop. The Imam السلام, found other ways to release the Quranic sciences to this Ummah. He was marginalized. He was not given too much freedom 
to speak about the Quran. So the Imam alayhi salam, he shared the knowledge of the Quran with his students. And one of his best students was Ibn Abbas. Ibn Abbas, Muslims call him Habr al-Ummah or Bahr al-Ummah. The ocean of this nation, the ink of this nation. Many, many of the verses that Muslims have the tafsir of, it comes from Ibn Abbas. Who educated Ibn Abbas? Who gave him his knowledge? That was Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salam. Let me share with you, with you this hadith. Sa'id ibn al-Musayyab, he narrates, he says, I heard a man ask Ibn Abbas about Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam. So Ibn Abbas praised Amir al-Mu'mineen. He tells him that Ali ibn Abi Talib is the one, Salla al-Qiblatayn, al-Bay'atayn. He's the one who was with the Prophet. He prayed to two, two Qiblas, when the Qibla was towards Jerusalem, and then when it shifted to Mecca. He was always with the Prophet there. He praised him. That man objected to Ibn Abbas. He told him, yeah, but he went to Basra and many Muslims got killed. He was trying to put the blame of the battle of Jamal on Amir al muminin And he's the one who killed so many people at Safin. Ibn Abbas gets frustrated. He tells him, Do you think I'm more knowledgeable or Ali ibn Abi Talib? That ignorant man tells him, if I thought Ali ibn Abi Talib was more knowledgeable, I wouldn't ask you. Of course, I see you more knowledgeable. Listen to the words of Ibn Abbas here. Ibn Abbas, when he hears that that man thinks he is more knowledgeable than Ali ibn Abi Talib, he became extremely angry and frustrated. And then he told him, فَكَلَتْكَ أُمُّكَ May your mother grieve you. Ali alayhi salam allamani. Ali is the one who taught me. I have my knowledge from him. And his knowledge from, was from Rasulullah. And the knowledge of Rasulullah was from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All the knowledge that I have is from Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam. And then, look at the testimony of Ibn Abbas. He states, all my knowledge is from Ali. وَعِلْمُ أَصْحَابِ مُحَمَّدٍ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَآلِهِ كُلِّهِمْ فِي عِلْمِ عَلِيٍّ كَالْقَطْرَةِ الْوَاحِدَةِ فِي سَبْعَةِ أَبْحُرِ All the companions of Rasulullah gather their knowledge, compare it to the knowledge of Ali ibn Abi Talib, it's like one drop from seven oceans. That's the knowledge of Amir al muminin so today, if other Muslims have access to tafsir al-Qur'an from Ibn Abbas, let them know that Ibn Abbas took his knowledge from the commander of the faithful, from Ali ibn Abi Talib salam. Now, we have an issue that happened during the time of Uthman, which was unifying the codex, the different versions. That's because initially Arabic was not standardized. Arabic was a spoken oral language. So different tribes started to write the Qur'an differently, or they would pronounce some words differently. Al-Bukhari narrates that Hudayfa ibn al-Yaman, he was participating um, at the battle of Armenia and Azerbaijan. He comes to Abu, he comes to Uthman during his caliphate. He tells him, Uthman, I found something very disturbing. I saw Muslims while I was at this battle. They had come from different parts of the Muslim ummah, and they were reciting some verses differently. And this is going to open the door for the Qur'an to be changed, just like the Bible was changed. Do something. Now who's Hudayf ibn al-Yaman? Hudayf ibn al-Yaman is one of the students of Ali ibn Abi Talib salam. He was one of the true loyal companions to Imam Ali after the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa Imam Ali salam praised Hudayf ibn al-Yaman. Hudayf ibn al-Yaman gives Uthman this suggestion. Uthman gathers, gathers the companions, also among them Imam Ali alayhi salam, and he tells them about this idea, they all approve it. Imam Ali alayhi salam approved it. He said, yes, let's unify the version so that people do not find a door or a window to change the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So even the unified version that Muslims had at that time, it was from the blessings of Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam as the suggestion came from the student of Imam Ali alayhi salam. Now we have the qira'at, the pronunciations, right? The different recitations. You'll find that 
scholars will tell you, especially from other schools of thought, there are seven qiraat that are famous. Some say nine, some say less, some say more. Today, this common qira'ah that we have, the one that most Muslims recite around the world, who do you think this recitation is from? Many Muslims don't know this. But the reality is that this qira'ah comes from Hafs. Hafs ibn Sulaiman al-Kufi. This is the version that is narrated from Hafs. Today, most Muslims read this version. Who was Hafs? Hafs was the companion of Imam al-Sadiq alayhi salam. Where did, get, where did Hafs get his recitation from? He got it from Asim ibn Abi Nujud. He was also one of the figures of Kufa. Where did he get it from? He got it from Abi Abdul Rahman as Sulami. Abu Abdul Rahman as Sulami, he was asked, Where did you get your recitation from? He said, I got it from Ali ibn Abi Talib. Today, over a billion Muslims, when they read the Quran, according to this very common version, they are reading the Qira'ah of Ali ibn Abi Talib. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. We are indebted to Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib السلام, when it comes to the Quran, the preservation of the Quran, the tafsir of the Quran, even the recitation and the pronunciation of the Quran. Not only that, even the dots on the Quran. You know, initially Arabic letters didn't have dots. You couldn't tell the difference between the ba and the ta and the tha. You had to know Arabic very well for you to know the word from the context. Now new Muslims were coming and joining the Muslim world. They were confused. How do I read this? Who's the first person who introduced the dot system in the Arabic language? Abu Aswad al-Du'ali. Abu Aswad al-Du'ali was one of the students of Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salam. And Imam Ali alayhi salam taught him Arabic grammar. He is the one who started Arabic grammar as a science. Imam Ali salam taught him that science, and the Imam salam taught him the dot system. Abu Aswad al-Du'ali was the first one who put dots on the letters for people to read them properly. And he's the student of Amir al-Mu'mineen. Imam Ali salam was in love with the Qur'an. His legacy was to preserve the Qur'an, and indeed he preserved the Qur'an. Unfortunately, other schools of thought don't highlight this. But this is something that we have to announce to the world. So we find that Amir al-Mu'mineen, his love for Allah is unique. His love for Rasulullah is unmatched. And his love for the Holy Quran. He lived every single day by the standards of the Holy Quran. The fourth dimension, very briefly. The love of Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salam for his family. You know, sometimes we forget this aspect of Amir al-Mu'mineen. But when you look at his love that he had for Lady Fatima alayhi salam, it's something that truly touches your heart. You know what the Imam alayhi salam says after he lost Lady Fatima? He read these two lines of poetry that capture his immense love for Lady Fatima. The Imam alayhi salam states, Kunna kazawji hamamatin fi aykatin. We were like a pair of doves, a pair of pigeons. Mutamatta'ina bi sahatin wa shababi. We were blessed with our youth, with our good health. Dakhala zaman bina wa farraqa baynana. But then the difficulties of time caused us to separate. Indeed, time and the tragedies of this world, they separate between loved ones. See how the Imam السلام, speaks about Lady Fatima. And then, and then my dear brothers and sisters, the Imam السلام, I know today is a jovial occasion, but just for you to see the love that he had for Lady Fatima. After he buried Lady Fatima السلام, and you know the Imam doesn't exaggerate. You know what words he said? And he was speaking to the grave of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa He was addressing the Prophet's soul. He said, Ya Rasulullah, Amma huzni fasarmad. My sadness, my sorrow is eternal. I've lost my loved one, Fatima. My sadness is eternal. Look at that expression of love. Walayli fa musahad. 
and I can never sleep at night anymore. Imam Ali lived more than 30 years after Lady Fatima. He remarried, he had children, but the Imam Ali salam says, after Fatima, I could not sleep ever one night. This is the deep love that Amir al Mu'mineen alayhi salam had. So we see his love for his wife, for his children is something that is truly inspirational. The fifth dimension, the love of Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam for his companions. The Imam was very loyal towards his companions. When you see how he speaks about his companions, it shows you that he truly loved them. He did not think, I'm the Imam, I'm infallible, where am I and where are they? The Imam truly loved his companions. He would state, مَا ذَرَّ إِخْوَانَنَا الَّذِينَ سُفِكَتْ دِمَاؤُهُمْ وَهُمْ بِصِفِّينَ أَنْ لَا يَكُونُ الْيَوْمَ أَحْيَا The Imam would cry over his companions who were killed at Safin. He says, where are they today? I wish they were here. Then the Imam السلام, begins to mention them one by one. Aina ikhwani alladheena rakibu al-tariq wa madaw ala al-haq. Where are my brothers who were on the right path, who were with me? Aina Ammar, Aina ibn al-Tayyihan, wa Aina dhu al-Shahadatayn. Where is Ammar? I miss Ammar. Where is ibn al-Tayyihan? Where is the Shahadatayn? You see, my dear brothers and sisters, the love of Amir al-Mu'mineen for his companions. He did not forget his companions who were killed, who were martyred. He would remember them, he would mention them by name. And that shows you the love and the loyalty of Amir al-Mu'mineen. Now if you're wondering, do you want to be the brother of Amir al-Mu'mineen? We cannot be the dust beneath the feet of Amir al-Mu'mineen. But do you want to be the brother of Amir al-Mu'mineen? The Imam says you can. You know what quality he gives? The Imam السلام, states, Let me describe to you my brother in the way of Allah. What makes my brother is big in my eyes is the smallness of the world in their eyes. Did you see this beautiful description from Amir al Mu'mineen? The Imam says, the smaller this materialistic dunya is in your eyes, the bigger you are in my eyes. And that's how you can be a brother to Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salam. By not being too concerned about this materialistic world. We have to leave this world anyway. Sooner or later, we have to leave it. And Nahj al balagh is a beautiful reminder for us that we will leave. The Imam السلام, says, if you're deceived, if you're confused, just look at the graves of those who came before you. Where are they? Where is their wealth? Some of them, nothing remained from them, not even their name. Some of us, we don't even know our fifth grandfather or grandmother. Believe me. If I were to ask you here, you would not even remember their name, let alone anything about them. The Imam السلام, is teaching us, that's how you can be my brother. Renounce this world, this materialistic world. Focus on your Lord. Focus on the Akhirah. And that's how you will achieve success. And finally, my dear brothers and sisters, Amir al muminins love for justice was the strongest love that allowed him to establish justice. The Imam alayhi salam, he was concerned about justice. He loved humanity and justice. He truly saw everyone not as just subjects, but his brothers and counterparts in creation. That's why in one beautiful sermon of Nahj al balagha the Imam says, and what's shocking, one day someone knocked at my door. Al-Ash'ath ibn Qais. He was trying to bribe Imam Ali. You know, today we have bribes. Maybe they're called campaign donations, right? But it's a form of bribery. When you have a big lobby, when you have a multi-billion dollar company donating 50 million dollars to your campaign, you think you can say no to them? That's a type of political bribery, but it's okay, we consider it legal. This man knocked at the door of Amir al muminin The Imam says, what's shocking is that one day, Tariqun Tarakana, a person came to knock at my door. I opened the door, I saw that he had covered a tray a tray of sweets 
The Imam says the sweets were so despicable in my eyes because they're a bribe. I felt as if it was made with the saliva of a snake. <laughs> Allahu Akbar. This is Amir al-Mu'min. You know if someone brings you delicious sweets that nobody else has, you'd enjoy it, you'd love it. Yeah, give it to me. Let me hide it from others. Not Amir al muminin He says, because this is a bribe, you're trying to bribe me, I see it as despicable. And then the Imam السلام, told him, Habalatka al hubul are you crazy? Are you out of your mind? You're trying to deceive me, deceive my religion? And then he made his powerful statement. He says, I swear by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if you put the universe and the galaxies in my hand, in return for what? To oppress an ant. Not to kill the ant, but to take away the grain of food from its mouth. Wallah, I would never do that. And why would I do that? Why would I do that? Why would I put myself in this misery? What is it about you people with these blessings that will perish? They will not stay. This is Amir al muminin Look at his love for justice. Because of justice, he did not allow anyone to bribe him. Because he cared about the people. Because he cared about the environment. You know, today we live in an era where we think we're becoming green and we're environmental friendly. Amir al-Mu'mineen instituted that 14 centuries ago. Just look at his letters to his governors. In one of his letters to his governors, the Imam السلام, commanded them. He told them, sharpen your pens. Why sharpen your pens? To save space. Because when the font is thinner, you can cram in more words. Look at how the Imam thinks 14 centuries ago. Save paper, save ink. Adiqu aqlamakum. Sharpen your pens. Waqaribu bayna suturikum. And don't put any gaps between the lines. Fill all the gaps. Use as much paper as you can. Wahdifu anni fudul al kalam. And get to the point. Don't put these fancy titles just because I'm the Khalifa. Get to the point and save space. You see his love for humanity, his love for the environment. Even his love for his enemies. Allahu Akbar. And I conclude with this. You really want to see the love of Amir, Amir al muminin See it at Safin. When the Imam السلام, arrives at Safin, the army of Muawiyah had arrived earlier. So they had access to the river. To the river of Furat in the northern regions of Syria. They blocked the army of Amir al muminin from water. The army of the Imam went thirsty. So they came to the Imam. They told him, let's fight them. The Imam says, no, I don't want to start the fight. I don't want to start the battle. But as the day went on, they got really thirsty. So when the night came, some of them couldn't handle it. The Imam was passing through his army when one man, he recited lines of poetry saying, is it possible? that we go thirsty and Abu al-Hasanayn is with us? It seemed these words moved Amir al muminin The Imam said, okay, okay. I'll let you go, but don't fight them. Just remove them from the banks of the river so you gain access. But don't start the battle. With this condition, I let you. So the army of the Imam with so much courage, they go to the banks of the river. And it was a minor fight. They basically removed them from the banks of the river, they gained access now to the water. Now that they gained access to the water, they said, okay, now it's payback time. Now let's deny them water. Let them go thirsty and die, and we'll easily kill them. The Imam السلام, said, refuse. The Imam السلام, refused. He said, no, we come from a family from Ahl al Bayt who does not deny our enemies water. That's the forgiveness of Amir al muminin You see him even showing love and compassion to the enemies who had come to kill him. But what can you say about Amir al muminin We can go on for centuries describing the love of Amir al muminin the humanity of Amir al muminin But we just say one thing to Allah. We say, oh Allah, you've given us many blessings in this world. And we are infinitely thank you for those blessings. But the greatest blessing that you have given us, and we thank you for that, is the love and the wilaya of Amir al Mu'mineen, wa Sayyid al Muwahideen, wa Ya'soob al Muslimin, Asad al Lah al Ghalib, Ali ibn Abi Talib, Sallu alayhi bi a'la aswatikum. Allahumma salli.